Euromaidan, Ukrainian, Evromajdan Russian, Evromajdan Yevromaidan, literally, European Square, was a wave of demonstrations and civil unrest in Ukraine, which began on the night of 21 November 2013 with public protests in Maidan Nizaliznosti, Independence Square, in Kiev. The protests were sparked by the Ukrainian government's decision to suspend the signing of an association agreement with the European Union, instead choosing closer ties to Russia and the Eurasian Economic Union. The scope of the protests soon widened, with calls for the resignation of President Viktor Yanukovych and his government. The protests were fueled by the perception of widespread government corruption, abuse of power, and violation of human rights in Ukraine. Transparency International named President Yanukovych as the top example of corruption in the world. The situation escalated after the violent dispersal of protesters on 30 November, leading to many more protesters joining. The protests led to the 2014 Ukrainian Revolution. During the Euromaidan, there were protests and clashes with police throughout Ukraine, especially at the Maidan in Kiev, which was occupied and barricaded by protesters, along with some administrative buildings, including Kiev City State Administration. On 8 December the crowd toppled Lenin statue nearby, police did not intrude. Protests and clashes increased in January, after the Ukrainian parliament passed a group of anti-protest laws. Protesters occupied government buildings in many regions of Ukraine. The protests climaxed in mid-February. Riot police advanced towards Maidan and clashed with protesters but did not fully occupy it. Police and activists fired live and rubber ammunition at multiple locations in Kiev. There was fierce fighting in Kiev on February 18-20, in which 77 activists and 17 police officers were killed see list of people killed during Euromaidan. Academic research suggests that many protesters were shot from locations controlled by Euromaidan. As a result of these events, Yanukovych was forced to make concessions to the opposition to end the bloodshed in Kiev and end the crisis. The Agreement on Settlement of Political Crisis in Ukraine was signed by Vitaly Klitschko, Arseniy Yatsenyuk, Ole Tyanibok. The signing was witnessed by the foreign ministers of Germany and Poland, Frank Walter Steinmeier, Radosław Sikorski, respectively, and the director of the Continental Europe Department of the French Foreign Ministry, Eric Fournier. Vladimir Lukin, representing Russia, refused to sign the agreement. The day the agreement was signed, the motorcade of Yanukovych was fired upon and shortly after that Yanukovych and other high government officials fled the country. Protesters gained control of the presidential administration and Yanukovych's private estate. Afterwards, the parliament removed Yanukovych from office, replaced the government with Alexander Turchinov, and ordered that former Prime Minister Yulia Tymoshenko be released from prison. Events in Kiev were soon followed by the Crimean crisis and pro-Russian unrest in eastern Ukraine. Despite the ousting of Yanukovych, the installation of a new government, and the adoption of the Ukraine-European Union Association Agreement's political provisions, the protests have sustained pressure on the government to reject Russian influence in Ukraine. Topic. Overview The demonstrations began on the night of 21 November 2013, when protests erupted in the capital, Kiev, after the Ukrainian government suspended preparations for signing the Ukraine-European Union Association Agreement with the European Union, to seek closer economic relations with Russia. On 24 November 2013, clashes between protesters and police began. Protesters strived to break cordon. Police used tear gas and batons. Protesters also used tear gas and some firecrackers according to the police, protesters were the first to use them. After a few days of demonstrations an increasing number of university students joined the protests. The Euromaidan has been characterized as an event of major political symbolism for the European Union itself, particularly as the largest ever pro-European rally in history. The protests continued despite heavy police presence, regularly sub-freezing temperatures, and snow. Escalating violence from government forces in the early morning of 30 November caused the level of protests to rise, with 400,000 to 800,000 protesters, according to Russia's opposition politician Boris Nemtsov, demonstrating in Kiev on the weekends of 1 December and 8 December. In the preceding weeks, protest attendance had fluctuated from 50,000 to 200,000 during organized rallies. 
Violent riots took place the 1st of December and the 19th of January through the 25th of January in response to police brutality and government repression. Starting the 23rd of January, several western Ukrainian oblast province governor buildings and regional councils were occupied in a revolt by Euromaidan activists. In the Russophone cities of Zaporizhia, Sumy, and Dnipropetrovsk, protesters also tried to take over their local government building and were met with considerable force from both police and government supporters, according to journalist Lisha Bushak writing in the 18th of February 2014 issue of Newsweek magazine. Euromaidan had grown into something far bigger than just an angry response to the fallen through EU deal. It's now about ousting Yanukovych and his corrupt government, guiding Ukraine away from its 200-year-long, deeply intertwined and painful relationship with Russia, and standing up for basic human rights to protest, speak and think freely and to act peacefully without the threat of punishment. A turning point came in late February, when enough members of the president's party fled or defected for the party to lose its majority in parliament, leaving the opposition large enough to form the necessary quorum. This allowed parliament to pass a series of laws that removed police from Kiev, cancelled anti-protest operations, restored the 2004 constitution, freed political detainees, and removed President Yanukovych from office. Yanukovych then fled to Ukraine's second-largest city of Kharkiv, refusing to recognize the parliament's decisions. The parliament assigned early elections for May 2014. <laughs> Background topic. Name history The term, Euromaidan, was initially used as a hashtag of Twitter. A Twitter account named Euromaidan was created on the first day of the protests. It soon became popular in the international media. The name is composed of two parts. Euro is short for Europe and Maiden refers to Maiden Nizaloznosti Independence Square, the large square in the downtown of Kiev, where the protests mostly took place. The word Maiden is a Turkish word meaning square or open space. Adopted by Ukrainians from the Ottoman Empire. During the protests, the word Maiden acquired meaning as a revolution and overthrow of the government. The term Ukrainian Spring is sometimes used, echoing the term Arab Spring. Topic. Initial causes On 30 March 2012 the European Union EU and Ukraine initiated an association agreement, however, the EU leaders later stated that the agreement would not be ratified unless Ukraine addressed concerns over a "...stark deterioration of democracy and the rule of law," including the imprisonment of Yulia Tymoshenko and Yuri Lutsenko in 2011 and 2012. In the months leading up to the protests Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych urged the parliament to adopt laws so that Ukraine would meet the EU's criteria. On 25 September 2013 Chairman of the Verkhovna Rada Ukraine's parliament Volodymyr Rybak stated he was sure that his parliament would pass all the laws needed to fit the EU criteria for the association agreement since, except for the Communist Party of Ukraine, the Verkhovna Rada has united around these bills. According to Pavlo Klimkin, one of the Ukrainian negotiators of the association agreement, initially, the Russians simply did not believe the association agreement with the EU could come true. They didn't believe in our ability to negotiate a good agreement and didn't believe in our commitment to implement a good agreement. In mid-August 2013 Russia changed its customs regulations on imports from Ukraine such that on 14 August 2013, the Russian Customs Service stopped all goods coming from Ukraine and prompted politicians and sources to view the move as the start of a trade war against Ukraine to prevent Ukraine from signing a trade agreement with the European Union. Ukrainian industrial policy minister Mikhailo Korolenko stated on 18 December 2013 that because of this Ukraine's exports had dropped by $1.4 billion or a 10% year-on-year decrease through the first 10 months of the year. The State Statistics Service of Ukraine reported in November 2013 that in comparison with the same months of 2012, industrial production in Ukraine in October 2013 had fallen by 4.9%, in September 2013 by 5.6%, and in August 2013 by 5.4% and that the industrial production in Ukraine in 2012 total had fallen by 1.8%. On 21 November 2013 a Ukrainian government decree suspended preparations for signing of the association agreement. 
The reason given was that the previous months Ukraine had experienced a drop in industrial production and our relations with cis countries. The government also assured, Ukraine will resume preparing the agreement when the drop in industrial production and our relations with cis countries are compensated by the European market. According to Ukrainian Prime Minister Mykola Azarov, the extremely harsh conditions of an IMF loan presented by the IMF on 20 November 2013, which included big budget cuts and a 40% increase in gas bills, had been the last argument in favor of the Ukrainian government's decision to suspend preparations for signing the association agreement. On 7 December 2013 the IMF clarified that it was not insisting on a single-stage increase in natural gas tariffs in Ukraine by 40%, but recommended that they be gradually raised to an economically justified level while compensating the poorest segments of the population for the losses from such an increase by strengthening targeted social assistance. The same day IMF resident representative in Ukraine Jerome Vache stated that this particular IMF loan is worth $4 billion and that it would be linked with policy, which would remove disproportions and stimulate growth. President Yanukovych attended the 28-29 November 2013 EU summit in Vilnius where originally it was planned that the association agreement would be signed on 29 November 2013, but the association agreement was not signed. Both Yanukovych and high-level EU officials signaled that they wanted to sign the association agreement at a later date. In an interview with Lally Weymouth, Ukrainian billionaire businessman and opposition leader Petro Poroshenko said, From the beginning, I was one of the organizers of the Maiden. My television channel, Channel 5, played a tremendously important role. On the 11th of December, when we had U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Newland and EU diplomat Catherine Ashton in Kiev during the night they started to storm the Maiden on the 11th of December 2013 the Prime Minister Mykola Azarov said he had asked for 20 billion euros 27 dollars in loans and aid to offset the cost of the EU deal the EU was willing to offer 610 million euros 838 million US in loans however Russia was willing to offer 15 billion US in loans Russia also offered Ukraine cheaper gas prices. As a condition for the loans, the EU required major changes to the regulations and laws in Ukraine. Russia did not. Topic public opinion about Euromaidan According to December 2013 polls by three different pollsters between 45% and 50% of Ukrainians supported Euromaidan, while between 42% and 50% opposed it. The biggest support for the protest can be found in Kiev about 75% and western Ukraine more than 80%. Among Euromaidan protesters, 55% were from the west of the country, with 24% from central Ukraine and 21% from the east. In a poll taken on 7 to 8 December, 73% of protesters had committed to continue protesting in Kiev as long as needed until their demands were fulfilled. This number had increased to 82% as of 3 February 2014. Polls also showed that the nation was divided in age, while a majority of young people were pro-EU, older generations, 50 and above, more often preferred the customs union of Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Russia. More than 41% of protesters were ready to take part in the seizure of administrative buildings as of February, compared to 13 and 19% during polls on 10 and 20 December 2013. At the same time, more than 50% were ready to take part in the creation of independent military units, compared to 15 and 21% during the past studies, respectively. According to a January poll, 45% of Ukrainians supported the protests, and 48% of Ukrainians disapproved of Euromaidan. In a March poll, 57% of Ukrainians said they supported the Euromaidan protests. A study conducted at Harvard University examining public opinion in regular and social media found that 74 percent of Russian speakers in Ukraine supported the Euromaidan movement, and a quarter opposed. Topic public opinion about joining the EU According to an August 2013 study by a Donetsk company, Research and Branding Group, 49% of Ukrainians supported signing the association agreement, while 31% opposed it and the rest had not decided yet. However, in a December poll by the same company, only 30% claimed that terms of the association agreement would be beneficial for the Ukrainian economy, while 39% said they were unfavorable for Ukraine. 
In the same poll, only 30% said the opposition would be able to stabilize the society and govern the country well, if coming to power, while 37% disagreed. Authors of the GFK Ukraine poll conducted 2 to 15 October 2013 claim that 45% of respondents believed Ukraine should sign an association agreement with the EU, whereas only 14% favored joining the Customs Union of Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Russia, and 15% preferred non alignment. Full text of the EU-related question asked by GFK reads, should Ukraine sign the EU-Ukraine Association Agreement, and, in the future, become an EU member? Another poll conducted in November by IFAK Ukraine for DW Trend showed 58% of Ukrainians supporting the country's entry into the European Union. On the other hand, a November 2013 poll by Kiev International Institute of Sociology showed 39% supporting the country's entry into the European Union and 37% supporting Ukraine's accession to the Customs Union of Belarus, Kazakhstan and Russia. In December 2013, then Prime Minister of Ukraine Mykola Azarov refuted the pro-EU poll numbers claiming that many polls posed questions about Ukraine joining the EU, and that Ukraine had never been invited to join the Union, but only to sign the association agreement. Topic. Comparison with the Orange Revolution The pro-European Union protests are Ukraine's largest since the Orange Revolution of 2004, which saw Yanukovych forced to resign as Prime Minister over allegations of voting irregularities. Although comparing the 2013 events in the same east-west vector as 2004, with Ukraine remaining a key geopolitical prize in Eastern Europe, for Russia and the EU, the Moscow Times noted that Yanukovych's government was in a significantly stronger position following his election in 2010. The Financial Times said the 2013 protests were "...largely spontaneous, sparked by social media, and have caught Ukraine's political opposition unprepared," compared to their well-organized predecessors. The hashtag hashtag Euromaidan Ukrainian hash Evromijden, Russian hash Evromijden, emerged immediately on the first meeting of the protests and was highly useful as a communication instrument for protesters. Vitaly Klitschko wrote in a tweet, "Friends." All those who came to Maidan Independence Square, well done. Who has not done it yet, join us now. The protest hashtag also gained traction on the Vcontacta social media network, and Klitschko tweeted a link to a speech he made on the square saying that once the protest was 100,000 strong, we'll go for Yanukovych. Referring to President Viktor Yanukovych, in an interview, opposition leader Yuri Lutsenko, when asked if the current opposition was weaker than it was in 2004, argued that the opposition was stronger because the stakes were higher. I asked each of the opposition leaders, do you realize that this is not a protest? It is a revolution. We have two roads, we go to prison or we win. Paul Robert Magochi illustrated the effect of the Orange Revolution on Euromaidan, saying, was the Orange Revolution a genuine revolution? Yes it was. And we see the effects today. The revolution wasn't a revolution of the streets or a revolution of political elections, it was a revolution of the minds of people, in the sense that for the first time in a long time, Ukrainians and people living in territorial Ukraine saw the opportunity to protest and change their situation. This was a profound change in the character of the population of the former Soviet Union. Lviv-based historian Yaroslav Haritsak also remarked on the generational shift. This is a revolution of the generation that we call the contemporaries of Ukraine's independence who were born around the time of 1991. It is more similar to the Occupy Wall Street protests or those in Istanbul demonstrations of this year. It's a revolution of young people who are very educated, people who are active in social media, who are mobile and 90% of whom have university degrees, but who don't have futures. According to Haritsak, young Ukrainians resemble young Italians, Czech, Poles, or Germans more than they resemble Ukrainians who are 50 and older. This generation has a stronger desire for European integration and fewer regional divides than their seniors. In a Kiev International Institute of Sociology poll taken in September, joining the European Union was mostly supported by young Ukrainians 69.8% of those aged 18 to 29, higher than the national average of 43.2% support. 
A November 2013 poll by the same institute found the same result with 70.8% aged 18 to 29 wanting to join the European Union while 39.7% was the national average of support. An opinion poll by GFK conducted 2 to 15 October found that among respondents aged 16 to 29 with a position on integration, 73% favored signing an association agreement with the EU, while only 45% of those over the age of 45 favored association. The lowest support for European integration was among people with incomplete secondary and higher education. Topic: <laughs> Escalation to violence. The movement started peacefully but later protesters felt justified in using violence after the government's crackdown on protesters which happened during the night of 30 November 2013. The Associated Press said on 19 February, The latest bout of street violence began Tuesday when protesters attacked police lines and set fires outside Parliament, accusing Yanukovych of ignoring their demands to enact constitutional reforms that would limit the president's power. A key opposition demand. Parliament, dominated by his supporters, was stalling on taking up a constitutional reform to limit presidential powers. Police responded by attacking the protest camp. Armed with water cannons, stun grenades and rubber bullets, police dismantled some barricades. But the protesters held their ground through the night, encircling the protest camp with new burning barricades of tires, furniture and debris. In the early stages of Euromaidan, there was discussion about whether the Euromaidan movement constituted a revolution, or a staged color revolution by outside forces. At the time many protest leaders such as Ole Tyenibach had already used this term frequently when addressing the public. Tyenibach called in an official 2 December press release for police officers and members of the military to defect to the Ukrainian Revolution. In a Skype interview with media analyst Andrij Holovatij, Vitaly Portnikov, council member of the Maiden National Alliance and president and editor in chief of the Ukrainian television channel TVI, stated, Euromaidan is a revolution and revolutions can drag on for years, and that, what is happening in Ukraine goes much deeper. It is changing the national fabric of Ukraine. Media outlets in the region dubbed the movement Eurorevolution Ukrainian. On the 10th of December Yanukovych said, "Calls for a revolution pose a threat to national security." Former Georgian president Mikhail Saakashvili has described the movement as the first geopolitical revolution of the 21st century. Political expert Anders Aslan commented on this aspect. Revolutionary times have their own logic that is very different from the logic of ordinary politics, as writers from Alexis de Tocqueville to Crane Brinton have taught. The first thing to understand about Ukraine today is that it has entered a revolutionary stage. Like it or not, we had better deal with the new environment rationally. <laughs> Demands On 29 November, a formal resolution by protest organizers proposed the following Form a coordinating committee to communicate with the European community. To state that the President, Parliament and the Cabinet of Ministers aren't capable of carrying out a geopolitically strategic course of development for the state and calls on Yanukovych's resignation. Demand the cessation of political repressions against Euromaidan activists, students, civic activists, and opposition leaders. The resolution stated that on the 1st of December, on the 22nd anniversary of Ukraine's independence referendum, that the group will gather at noon on Independence Square to announce their further course of action after the forced police dispersal of all protesters from Maidan Nizhalyzhnosti on the night of the 30th of November. The dismissal of Minister of Internal Affairs Vitaly Zakharchenko became one of the protesters' main demands. A petition to the U.S. White House demanding sanctions against Viktor Yanukovych and Ukrainian government ministers gathered over 100,000 signatures in four days. Ukrainian students nationwide have also demanded the dismissal of Minister of Education Dmitro Tabachnik. On 5 December, Batkivshina faction leader Arseniy Yatsenyuk stated, 
Our three demands to the Verkhovna Rada and the President remained unchanged, the resignation of the government, the release of all political prisoners, first and foremost, the release of former Ukrainian Prime Minister Yulia Tymoshenko, and the release of nine individuals who were illegally convicted after being present at a rally on Bankova Street on December 1, the suspension of all criminal cases, and the arrest of all Burkett officers who were involved in the illegal beating up of children on Maiden Nazaleznosti. The opposition also demanded that the government resumed negotiations with the IMF for a loan that they saw as key to helping Ukraine, "...through economic troubles that have made Yanukovych lean toward Russia". <laughs> Topic. Timeline of the events The Euromaidan protest movement began late at night on 21 November 2013, as a peaceful protest. Topic. Riots in Kiev On 30 November 2013, the protests were dispersed violently by the Burkitt riot police units, sparking riots the following day in Kiev. On 1 December 2013, protesters reoccupied the square and through December further clashes with the authorities and political ultimatums by the opposition ensued. This culminated in a series of anti-protest laws by the government on 16 January 2014, and further rioting on Harusheskoho Street. Early February 2014 saw a bombing of the trade union's building, as well as the formation of self-defense teams by protesters. The 1 December 2013 riots the 11th of December 2013 assault. Topic: 2014 Harusheskoho Street riots. On the 19th of January, a Sunday mass protest, the ninth in a row, took place, gathering up to 200,000 in central Kiev to protest against the new anti-protest laws, dubbed the Dictatorship Laws. Many protesters ignored the face concealment ban by wearing party masks, hard hats and gas masks. Opposition leader Vitaly Klitschko appeared covered with powder after he was sprayed with a fire extinguisher. Riot police and government supporters cornered a group of people who were trying to seize government buildings. The number of riot police on Harusheskoho Street increased after buses and army trucks showed up. The latter resulted in the buses being burned as a barricade. The next day, a cleanup began in Kiev. On the 22nd of January, more violence erupted in Kiev. This resulted in eight to nine people dead. Topic: 2014 Ukrainian Revolution. After a series of violent events towards protesters in Kiev, leaving 100 of them dead, President Yanukovych signed the agreement on settlement of political crisis in Ukraine. The next day he fled the country and was removed from office by the Rada on the 22nd of February 2014. Topic: <inaudible> Protests across Ukraine. Of the 24th of November protest in Ivano-Frankivsk saw several thousand protesters gather at the regional administration building. No classes were held in the universities of western Ukrainian cities such as Lviv, Ivano-Frankivsk and Uzhorod. Protests also took place in other large Ukrainian cities, Kharkiv, Donetsk, Dnipropetrovsk, Luhansk, Lviv, and Uzhorod. The rally in Lviv in support of the integration of Ukraine into the EU was initiated by the students of local universities. This rally saw 25 to 30,000 protesters gather on Prospect Svobody Freedom Avenue in Lviv. The organizers plan to continue this rally till the Third Eastern Partnership Summit in Vilnius, Lithuania, on 28–29 November 2013. A rally in Simferopol, which drew around 300, saw nationalists and Crimean Tatars unite to support European integration. The protesters sang both the Ukrainian national anthem and the anthem of the Ukrainian Sich Rifleman. Point seven people were injured after a tent encampment in Dnipropovsk was ordered cleared by court order on 25 November and it appeared that thugs had undertaken to perform the clearance. Officials estimated the number of attackers to be 10 to 15, and police did not intervene in the attacks. Similarly, police in Odessa ignored calls to stop the demolition of Euromaidan camps in the city by a group of 30, and instead removed all parties from the premises. 
Fifty police officers and men in plain clothes also drove out a Euromaidan protest in Chernihiv the same day. On 25 November, in Odessa, 120 police raided and destroyed a tent encampment made by protesters at 5.20 in the morning. The police detained three of the protesters, including the leader of the Odessa branch of Democratic Alliance, Alexei Chorna. All three were beaten in the police vehicle and then taken to the Portofrankovsk police station without their arrival being recorded. The move came after the district administrative court hours earlier issued a ban restricting citizens' right to peaceful assembly until New Year. The court ruling places a blanket ban on all demonstrations, the use of tents, sound equipment and vehicles until the end of the year. On the 26th of November, a rally of 50 was held in Donetsk. On the 28th of November, a rally was held in Yalta. University faculty who attended were pressured to resign by university officials. On the 29th of November, Lviv protesters numbered some 20,000. Like in Kiev, they locked hands in a human chain, symbolically linking Ukraine to the European Union organizers claimed that some 100 people even crossed the Ukrainian-Polish border to extend the chain to the European Union. On 1 December, the largest rally outside of Kiev took place in Lviv by the statue of Taras Shevchenko, where over 50,000 protesters attended. Mayor Andriy Sadovy, Council Chairman Peter Kolodi, and prominent public figures and politicians were in attendance. An estimated 300 rallied in the eastern city of Donetsk demanding that President Viktor Yanukovych and the government of Prime Minister Mykola Azarov resign. Meanwhile, in Kharkiv, thousands rallied with writer Serhii Zaydan, during a speech, calling for revolution. The protest was peaceful. Protesters claimed at least 4,000 attended, with other sources saying 2,000. In Dnipropetrovsk, 1,000 gathered to protest the EU agreement suspension, show solidarity with those in Kiev, and demand the resignation of local and metropolitan officials. They later marched, shouting, Ukraine is Europe! and Revolution! Euromaidan protests were also held in Simferopol, where 150 to 200 attended, and Odessa on the 2nd of December. In an act of solidarity, Lviv Oblast declared a general strike to mobilize support for protests in Kiev, which was followed by the formal order of a general strike by the cities of Ternopil and Ivano-Frankivsk. In Dnipropetrovsk on the 3rd of December, a group of 300 protested in favor of European integration and demanded the resignation of local authorities, heads of local police units, and the security. Service of Ukraine SBU. On 7 December it was reported that police were prohibiting those from Ternopil and Ivano-Frankivsk from driving to Kiev. Protests on 8 December saw record turnout in many Ukrainian cities, including several in eastern Ukraine. On the evening, the fall of the monument to Lenin in Kiev took place. The statue made out of stone was completely hacked to pieces by jubilant demonstrators. On 9 December, a statue of Vladimir Lenin was destroyed in the town of Kotosk in Odessa Oblast. In Ternopil, Euromaidan organizers were prosecuted by authorities. The removal or destruction of Lenin monuments and statues gained particular momentum after the destruction of the Kiev Lenin statue. Under the motto, Leninopad, Leninopad, translated into English as Leninfall. Activists pulled down a dozen monuments in the Kiev region, Jydomir, Chmelnyshki, and elsewhere, or damaged them during the course of the Euromaidan protests into spring of 2014. In other cities and towns, monuments were removed by organized heavy equipment and transported to scrapyards or dumps. On the 14th of December, Euromaidan supporters in Kharkiv voiced their disapproval of authorities fencing off Freedom Square from the public by covering the metal fence in placards. They have since 5 December been the victims of theft and arson. A Euromaidan activist in Kharkiv was attacked by two men and stabbed 12 times. The assailants were unknown but activists told the Kharkiv-based civic organization Maiden that they believe the city's mayor, Gennady Kearns, to be behind the attack. On the 22nd of December, 2000 rallied in Dnipropovsk. In late December, 500 marched in Donetsk. Due to the regime's hegemony in the city, foreign commentators have suggested that, for 500 marchers to assemble in Donetsk is the equivalent of 50,000 in Lviv or 500,000 in Kiev. On 5 January, marches in support of Euromaidan were held in Donetsk, Dnipropovsk, Odessa, and Kharkiv, the latter three drawing several hundred and Donetsk only 100. On the 11th of January, 150 activists met in Kharkiv for a general forum on uniting the nationwide Euromaidan efforts. 
A church where some were meeting was stormed by over a dozen thugs, and others attacked meetings in a bookstore, smashing windows and deploying tear gas to stop the maiden meetings from taking place. On the 22nd of January in Donetsk, two simultaneous rallies were held, one pro-Euromaidan and one pro-government. The pro-government rally attracted 600 attendees to about 100 from the Euromaidan side. Police reports claimed 5,000 attended to support the government, to only 60 from Euromaidan. In addition, approximately 150 Taitushki appeared and encircled the Euromaidan protesters with megaphones and began a conflict, burning wreaths and Svoboda party flags, and shouted, Down with fascists! but were separated by police. Meanwhile, Donetsk City Council pleaded with the government to take tougher measures against Euromaidan protesters in Kiev. Reports indicated a media blackout took place in Donetsk, in Lviv on of January, amid the police shootings of protesters in the capital, military barracks were surrounded by protesters. Many of the protesters included mothers whose sons are serving in the military, and pleaded with them not to deploy to Kiev. In Vinnytsia on of January thousands protesters blocked the main street of the city and the traffic. Also, they brought, "...democracy in coffin." to the city hall, as a present to Yanukovych. The 23rd of January Odessa City Council member and Euromaidan activist Alexander Ostapenko's car was bombed. The mayor of Sumy threw his support behind the Euromaidan movement on 24 January, laying blame for the civil disorder in Kiev on the party of regions and communists. The Crimean parliament repeatedly stated that because of the events in Kiev it was ready to join autonomous Crimea to Russia. On 27 February armed men seized the Crimean parliament and raised the Russian flag. The 27 February was latter declared a day of celebration for the Russian Spetsnaz special forces by Vladimir Putin by presidential decree. In the beginning of March, thousands of Crimean Tatars in support of Euromaidan clashed with pro-Russian protesters in Simferopol. On 4 March 2014, a mass pro-Euromaidan rally was held in Donetsk for the first time. About 2,000 people were there. Donetsk is a major city in the far east of Ukraine and serves as Yanukovych's stronghold and the base of his supporters. On 5 March 2014, 7,000 to 10,000 people rallied in support of Euromaidan in the same place. After a leader declared the rally over, a fight broke out between pro-Euromaidan and 2,000 pro-Russian protesters. Topic: <laughs> Occupation of administrative buildings. Starting on 23 January, several Western Ukrainian Oblast Province Governor Buildings and Regional Councils RSAs were occupied by Euromaidan activists. Several RSAs of the occupied oblasts then decided to ban the activities and symbols of the Communist Party of Ukraine and Party of Regions in their oblast. In the cities Zaporizhia, Dnipropovosk and Odessa protesters also tried to take over their local RSA. Protests outside Ukraine Smaller protests or Euromaidans have been held internationally, primarily among the larger Ukrainian diaspora populations in North America and Europe. The largest took place on 8 December in New York, with over 1,000 attending. Notably, in December 2013, Warsaw's Palace of Culture and Science, Buffalo Electric Vehicle Company Tower in Buffalo, Sierra Center in Philadelphia, the Tbilisi City Hall in Georgia, and Niagara Falls on the U.S.-Canada border were illuminated in blue and yellow as a symbol of solidarity with Ukraine. Antimaidan and pro-government rallies Pro-government rallies during Euromaidan have largely been credited as funded by the government. Several news outlets have investigated the claims to confirm that by and large, attendees at pro-government rallies do so for financial compensation and not for political reasons, and are not an organic response to the Euromaidan. People stand at Euromaidan protesting against the violation of human rights in the state, and they are ready to make sacrifices. Said Oleksiy Heron, a political scientist at Kiev Mohyla Academy in Kiev, "...people at Antimaidan stand for money only. The government uses these hirelings to provoke resistance. They won't be sacrificing anything." <laughs> Euromaidan groups Automaidan <laughs> <laughs> 
Automaton was a movement within the Euromaidan, that sought the resignation of the Ukrainian president Viktor Yanukovych. It was made up mainly of drivers who would protect the protest camps and blockade streets. It organized a car procession on 29 December 2013 to the president's residence in Mezhyhiria to voice their protests at his refusal to sign the Ukraine-European Union Association Agreement in December 2013. The motorcade was stopped a couple of hundred meters short of his residence. Automaton was the repeated target of violent attacks by government forces and supporters. Topic: <inaudible> Self-defense groups. On the 30th of November 2013, the day after the dispersion of Euromaidan, Euromaidan organizers, aided by groups such as Svoboda, created Self-Defense of the Maiden their own police force for protecting protesters from police and providing security within the city. Head of self-defense is Andriy Parabi. The groups are divided up into sotnias, or hundreds, which have been described as a force that is providing the tip of the spear in the violent showdown with government security forces. The Sotni take their name from a traditional form of Cossacks' cavalry formation, and were also used in the Ukrainian People's Army, Ukrainian Insurgent Army, Ukrainian National Army etc. along with Mr. Parabi's force, there are some independent divisions of enforcers some of them are also referred to as Sotnias and even self-defense, like the security of the trade union's building until 2 January 2014, Narnia and Vikings from Kiev City State Administration, Volodymyr Parasuk's Sotnia from Conservatory Building, etc. Mr. Parabi officially asked such divisions to not call themselves self-defense, Pravi Sector coordinates its actions with self-defense and is formally a 23-road Sotnia, although already had hundreds of members at the time of registering as a Sotnia. Second Sotnia staffed by Svoboda's members tends to dissociate itself from Sotnias of self-defense of Maiden. Casualties <laughs> 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 Topic. Deaths The first of major casualties occurred on the Day of Unity of Ukraine, the 22nd of January 2014. Four people permanently lost their vision, and one man died by falling from a colonnade. The circumstances of his death are unclear. At least five more people were confirmed dead during the clashes on the 22nd of January, four people perished from gunshot wounds. Medics confirmed bullet wounds to be from firearms such as a Dragonov sniper rifle 7.62 mm and possibly a Makarov handgun 9 mm in the deaths of Nihoyan and Zhizneski. There are photos of Burkett utilizing shotguns such as the RPC fort, and reporters verified the presence of shotgun casings littering the ground. Ukrainian Prosecutor General's office confirmed two deaths from gunshot wounds in Kiev protests. We are pursuing several lines of inquiry into these murders, including that they may have been committed by Burkett Special Police Unit officers, Vitaly Sakel, first deputy chief of the Ukrainian Interior Ministry's main investigative directorate told a press conference in Kiev on Friday, It was established that the weapons and cartridges that were used to commit these killings are hunting cartridges. Such is the conclusion of forensic experts. Most likely, it was a smoothbore firearm. I want to stress that the cartridges which were used to commit the murders were not used by, and are not in use of, the police. They have no such cartridges," said First Deputy Chief of the Ukrainian Interior Ministry's main investigative directorate. The MVS has not ruled out that Burkett officers committed the killings. On 31 January it was discovered that 26 unidentified, unclaimed bodies remained in the Kiev Central Morgue, 14 of which were from January alone. Journalists revealed that a mass burial was planned on 4 February 2014. The Kiev City Administration followed on the announcement with its own statement informing that there are 14 such bodies, 5 from January, on 18 and 19 February, at least 26 people were killed in clashes with police, moreover, a self-defense soldier from Maiden was found dead. Journalist Vyacheslav Veremy was murdered by pro-government Titushki and shot in the chest when they attacked his taxi. It was announced that an additional 40 to 50 people died in the fire that engulfed the trade union building after police attempted to seize it the night before. On the 20th of February, gunfire killed 60 people, according to an opposition medical service. At least 79 people were killed and 570 injured. 
At least 13 officers were killed and 130 hospitalized with gunshot wounds. Topic: <inaudible> Investigation into shooters snipers. Topic: <inaudible> Harusheskoho Street riot shootings. During the 2014 Harusheskoho Street riots of 22 to 25 January, three protesters were killed by firearms. Ole Tatarov, Deputy Chief of the Ukrainian Interior Ministry's main investigative directorate under Yanukovych, claimed in January that t he theory we are looking at is the killing was by unidentified persons. This is an official theory, and the unidentified persons could be various people, a whole host of them. It could have been motivated by disruptive behavior, or with the aim of provocation. Quote. He then claimed the cartridges and weapons used in the shootings were not police issue. Forensics experts found that protesters were killed with both buckshot and rifle bullets, while medics confirmed the bullet wounds to be from firearms such as the Dragonov sniper rifle and possibly 9 18 mm Makarov cartridges. A report published on 25 January by Armament Research Services, a speciality arms and munitions consultancy in Perth, Australia, stated that the mysterious Cufflink shaped projectiles, presumably fired by riot police on Harusheskoho Street at protesters during clashes, were not meant for riot control, but for stopping vehicles, busting through doors, and piercing armor. The bullets were reported to be special armor piercing 12 gauge shotgun projectiles, likely developed and produced by the Spetstechnika Specialized Equipment Design Bureau, a facility located in Kiev and associated with the Ministry of Internal Affairs. On 31 January 2014, Vitaly Sakel, first deputy chief of the Ukrainian Interior Ministry's main investigative directorate, told a press conference that we are pursuing several lines of inquiry into these murders, including that they may have been committed by Burkett Special Police Unit officers. On 31 January 2014 during a live broadcast on television channel. Rossiya, the far-right Russian politician Vladimir Zhirinovsky expressed threats towards the protesting events in Kiev stating the following. Today our client in Kiev, the honored Viktor Fedorovich Yanukovych, he will show you the heat when the Olympiad ends. You will know what is Yanukovych. Right now he got sick just in case, but later it will be announced. Spare no bullets. And we will give bullets, instead of money we will give bullets. On 10 October 2014 Reuters published a report about their examination of Ukraine's probes into the Maiden shootings. They have uncovered. Serious flaws. In the case against Burkett Special Police Force officers arrested by the new Ukrainian government and charged with murder of 39 unarmed protesters. For example, as Reuters' own investigation found out, the senior among arrested officers was missing right hand after an accident six years ago. This dismissed main evidence presented by prosecutor, a photograph of a man holding his rifle with both hands. Other. Flaws. According to Reuters included the fact that no one was charged with killing policemen and that the prosecutors and the minister in charge of the investigation all took part in the uprising. For example, the general prosecutor of Ukraine Vitaly Yarama is known for hitting a traffic policeman in the face during the protests, which he denied, but a video of the incident appeared later and confirmed his involvement in the attack. Topic. Snipers deployed during the climax of the protests. Following the revolution of 18-23 February that saw over 100 killed in gunfire, the government's new health minister, Ole Musi, a doctor who helped oversee medical treatment for casualties during the protests, suggested to the Associated Press that the similarity of bullet wounds suffered by opposition victims and police indicates the shooters were trying to stoke tensions on both sides and spark even greater violence, with the goal of toppling Yanukovych and justifying a Russian invasion. I think it wasn't just a part of the old regime that plotted the provocation, but it was also the work of Russian special forces who served and maintained the ideology of the old regime, he said, citing forensic evidence. 
Hennady Moskal, a former deputy head of Ukraine's main security agency, the SBU, and of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, suggested in an interview published in the Ukrainian newspaper Jerkalo Tizhnia that snipers from the MIA and SBU were responsible for the shootings, not foreign agents, acting on contingency plans dating back to Soviet times, stating, "...snipers received orders to shoot not only protesters, but also police forces." This was all done to escalate the conflict, to justify the police operation to clear Maiden. The IB Times reported that a telephone call between Estonian Foreign Minister Irma's PAET and High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy Catherine Ashton had been intercepted in which PAET stated that a doctor named Olga stated that victims from both sides were shot by the same snipers and that Olga had photos of the shooting victims with the same handwriting. PAET said he found it really disturbing that now the new coalition doesn't want to investigate what exactly happened and that there is a stronger and stronger understanding that behind snipers it was not Yanukovych it was somebody from the new coalition however PAET later denied that he implicated the opposition in anything as he was merely relaying rumors he had heard without giving any assessment of their veracity while acknowledging that the phone call was genuine a spokesperson for the U.S. State Department described the leaking of the call as an example of Russian tradecraft. Olga Bogomolays, the doctor, who allegedly claimed that protesters and Burkett troops came under fire from the same source, said she had not told PAET that policemen and protesters had been killed in the same manner, that she did not imply that the opposition was implicated in the killings, and that the government informed her that an investigation had been started. A German TV investigation met one of the few doctors that treated the wounded of both sides. The wounded that we treated, all had the same type of bullet wounds. The bullets were all identical. That's all I can say. In the bodies of the wounded militia, and the opposition. Lawyers representing relatives of the dead complained. We haven't been informed of the type of weapons, we have no access to the official reports, and to the operation schedules. We have no documents to the investigation, state prosecutors won't show us any papers." On 12 March 2014, Interior Minister Avakov has stated that the conflict was provoked by a non-Ukrainian third party, and that an investigation was ongoing. On 21 March 2014, Ole Magnitsky, Ukraine Parliamentary Commissioner for the Supervision of the General Prosecutor of Ukraine and a member of the right-wing Svoboda Party, stated that the government had identified the snipers shooting at the demonstrators in Kiev as Ukrainian citizens. But did not release their names. On 31 March 2014, the Daily Beast published photos and videos which appear to show that the snipers were members of the Ukrainian Security Services SBU anti-terrorist Alpha Team Unit, who had been trained in Russia. The media suggested that it was not the Ukrainian riot police which fired on the protesters as previously believed, although the members of Alpha Team are Ukrainian citizens. On 2 April, law enforcement authorities announced in a press conference they had detained nine suspects in the 18 20 February shootings of Euromaidan activists, Acting Prosecutor General of Ukraine Ole Magnitsky reported. Among the detainees was the leader of the sniper squad. All of the detained are officers of the Kiev City Burkett unit, and verified the involvement of the SBU's Alpha Group in the shootings. Officials also reported that they plan to detain additional suspects in the Maiden shootings in the near future, and stressed that the investigation is ongoing, but hindered by the outgoing regime's destruction of all documents and evidence. Ukraine's Ministry of Internal Affairs confirmed that Viktor Yanukovych gave the order to fire on protesters on 20 February. During the press conference, Ukraine's interior minister, chief prosecutor and top security chief implicated more than 30 Russian FSB agents in the crackdown on protesters, who in addition to taking part in the planning, flew large quantities of explosives into an airport near Kiev. Valentin Nalavychenko, the interim head of Ukraine's SBU State Security Agency, said the agents were stationed in Kiev during the entire Euromaidan protests, were provided with state telecommunications while residing at an SBU compound, and in regular contact with Ukrainian security officials. We have substantiated grounds to consider that these very groups which were located at an SBU training ground took part in the planning and execution of activities of this so-called anti-terrorist operation," said Nalavychenko. 
Investigators, he said, had established that Yanukovych's SBU chief Alexander Yakomenko, who had fled the country, had received reports from FSB agents while they were stationed in Ukraine, and that Yakomenko held several briefings with the agents. Russia's Federal Security Bureau rejected the comments as groundless accusations and otherwise refused to comment. In 2015 BBC published a story based on an interview with an anonymous sniper who said he was firing at anti-riot police from Conservatory Music Academy building on the morning of 20 January 2014. The sniper said he was recruited by a former military, claiming to be working for Euromaidan leadership. These morning shots are said to have provoked return fire from police snipers that resulted in many deaths. Andriy Shevchenko from Euromaidan leadership said he received calls from anti-riot police command reporting that his people are being shot by sniper bullets from the areas controlled by the protesters. Another Euromaidan leader, Andriy Paraby, said his team searched the conservatory and found no snipers. He confirmed that many victims on both sides were shot by snipers, but they were shooting from other, taller buildings surrounding the conservatory and was convinced they were snipers controlled by Russia. Topic. Press and medics injured by police attacks A number of attacks by law enforcement agents on members of the media and medical personnel have been reported. Some 40 journalists were injured during the staged assault at Bankova Street on 1 December 2013. At least 42 more journalists were victims of police attacks at Harusheskoho Street on of January 2014. On the 22nd of January 2014, Television News Service (TSN) reported that journalists started to remove their identifying uniform, vests and helmets as they were being targeted, sometimes on purpose, sometimes accidentally. Since the 21st of November 2013, a total of 136 journalists have been injured. On the 21st of January 2014, 26 journalists were injured with at least two badly injured by police stun grenades. Two others were arrested by police. On the 22nd of January, a correspondent of Reuters, Vasily Fedosenko, was intentionally shot in the head by a marksman with rubber ammunition during clashes at Harusheskoho Street. Later, a journalist of Espresso TV Dmitro Devoychenkov was kidnapped, beaten and taken to an unknown location, but later a parliamentarian was informed that he was finally released. On 24 January, President Yanukovych ordered the release of all journalists from custody. On 31 January, a video from the 22nd of January 2014 was published that showed policemen in Burkitt uniforms intentionally firing at a medic who raised his hands. On 18 February 2014, American photojournalist Mark Estabrook was injured by Burkitt forces, who threw two separate concussion grenades at him just inside the gate at the Harusheskoho Street barricade, with shrapnel hitting him in the shoulder and lower leg. He continued bleeding all the way to Cologne, Germany for surgery. He was informed upon his arrival in Maiden to stay away from the hospitals in Kiev to avoid Yanukovych's Burkitt police capture February 2014 Topic Impact Known impact to date includes the following Topic Support for Euromaidan in Ukraine According to a 4 to 9 December 2013 study by Research and Branding Group 49% of all Ukrainians supported Euromaidan and 45% had the opposite opinion. It was mostly supported in Western 84% and Central Ukraine 66%. A third of residents of South Ukraine and 13% of residents of Eastern Ukraine supported Euromaidan as well. The percentage of people who do not support the protesters was 81% in East Ukraine, 60% in South Ukraine, in Central Ukraine 27% and in Western Ukraine 11%. Polls have shown that two-thirds of Kievans support the ongoing protests, a poll conducted by the Kucherev Democratic Initiatives Fund and Razumkov Center, between 20 and 24 December, showed that over 50% of Ukrainians supported the Euromaidan protests, while 42% opposed it. Another research and branding group survey conducted from 23 to 27 December showed that 45% of Ukrainians supported Euromaidan, while 50% did not. 
43% of those polled thought that Euromaidan's consequences sooner could be negative, while 31% of the respondents thought the opposite, 17% believed that Euromaidan would bring no negative consequences. An Ilko Kucherev Democratic Initiatives Foundation survey of protesters conducted 7 and 8 December 2013 found that 92% of those who came to Kiev from across Ukraine came on their own initiative, 6.3% was organized by a public movement, and 1.8% were organized by a party. 70% said they came to protest the police brutality of 30 November, and 54% to protest in support of the European Union Association Agreement signing. Among their demands, 82% wanted detained protesters freed, 80% wanted the government to resign, and 75% want President Yanukovych to resign and for snap elections. The poll showed that 49.8% of the protesters are residents of Kiev and 50.2% came from elsewhere in Ukraine, 38% of the protesters are aged between 15 and 29, 49% are aged between 30 and 54, and 13% are 55 or older. A total of 57.2% of the protesters are men. In the eastern regions of Donetsk, Luhansk, and Kharkiv, 29% of the population believe, in certain circumstances, an authoritarian regime may be preferable to a democratic one. According to polls, 11% of the Ukrainian population has participated in the Euromaidan demonstrations, and another 9% has supported the demonstrators with donations. Topic public opinion about association agreement According to a 4 to 9 December 2013 study by Research and Branding Group 46% of Ukrainians supported the integration of the country into EU, and 36% into the Customs Union of Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Russia. Most support for EU integration could be found in West 81% and in Central 56% Ukraine, 30% of residents of South Ukraine and 18% of residents of Eastern Ukraine supported the integration with EU as well. Integration with the Customs Union was supported by 61% of East Ukraine and 54% of South Ukraine and also by 22% of Central and 7% of Western Ukraine. According to a 7 to the 17th of December 2013 poll by the Sociological Group, rating 49. 1% of respondents would vote for Ukraine's accession to the European Union in a referendum and 29.6% would vote against the motion. Meanwhile, 32.5% of respondents would vote for Ukraine's accession to the Customs Union of Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Russia and 41.9% would vote against. Topic. Political impact During the annual World Economic Forum meeting at the end of January 2014 in Davos Switzerland, Ukrainian Prime Minister Mykola Azarov received no invitations to the main events, according to the Financial Times's Gideon Rachman because the Ukrainian government was blamed for the violence of the 2014 Hrusheskoho Street riots. A telephone call was leaked of U.S. diplomat Victoria Nuland speaking to the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Jeffrey Pyatt about the future of the country, in which she said that Klitschko should not be in the future government, and expressed her preference for Arseniy Yatsenyuk, who became interim prime minister. She also casually stated, "'Fuck the EU!' German Chancellor Angela Merkel said she deemed Newland's comment, "'Completely unacceptable.'" Commenting on the situation afterwards, State Department spokeswoman Jen Psaki said that Newland had apologized to her EU counterparts while White House spokesman Jay Carney alleged that because it had been Tweeted out by the Russian government, it says something about Russia's role. In February 2014 IBTimes reported, If Svoboda and other far-right groups gain greater exposure through their involvement in the protests, there are fears they could gain more sympathy and support from a public grown weary of political corruption and Russian influence on Ukraine. In the following late October 2014 Ukrainian parliamentary election Svoboda lost 31 seats of the 37 seats it had won in the 2012 parliamentary election. The other main far-right party right sector won one seat of the 450 seats in the Ukrainian parliament in the same 2014 election. From 27 February 2014 till 12 November 2014 three members of Svoboda did hold positions in Ukraine's government. On 21 February, after negotiations between the President Yanukovych and representatives of opposition with mediation of representatives of the European Union and Russia, the agreement, "...about settlement of political crisis in Ukraine," was signed. 
The agreement provided return to the Constitution of 2004, that is to a parliamentary presidential government, carrying out early elections of the president until the end of 2014 and formation of the Government of National Trust. The Verkhovna Rada adopted the law on release of all detainees during protest actions. Divisions of Golden Eagle and internal troops left the center of Kiev. On 21 February, at the public announcement leaders of parliamentary opposition of conditions of the signed agreement, representatives of right sector declared that they don't accept the gradualness of political reforms stipulated in the document, and demanded immediate resignation of the President Yanukovych. Otherwise they intended to go for storm of presidential administration and Verkhovna Rada. On the night of the 22nd of February activists of Euromaidan seized the government quarter left by law enforcement authorities and made a number of new demands. In particular, immediate resignation of the president Yanukovych. Earlier that day, they stormed into Yanukovych's mansion. On 23 February 2014, following the 2014 Ukrainian Revolution, the Rada passed a bill that would have altered the law on languages of minorities, including Russian. The bill would have made Ukrainian the sole state language at all levels. However, on the next week, 1 March, President Turchinov vetoed the bill. Topic. Human rights impact According to Eduard Delinsky, executive director of the Kiev-based Ukrainian Jewish Committee, Ukrainian Jews overwhelmingly supported the 2014 Euromaidan, however, its aftermath led to the raise of antisemitism and social acceptance of previously marginal far-right groups, together with government's policy of historical negationism in regard to the World War II ethnic cleansing committed by the Ukrainian nationalist movement against the country's minorities. Economic impact The Prime Minister, Mykola Azarov, asked for €20 billion, Euros $27 billion in loans and aid from the EU. The EU was willing to offer €610 million, Euros $838 million US in loans, however Russia was willing to offer €15 billion US in loans. Russia also offered Ukraine cheaper gas prices. As a condition for the loans, the EU required major changes to the regulations and laws in Ukraine. Russia did not, Moody's Investors Service reported on 4 December 2013, "...as a consequence of the severity of the protests, demand for foreign currency is likely to rise," and noted that this was another blow to Ukraine's already poor solvency. First Deputy Prime Minister Serhii Arbuzov stated on 7 December Ukraine risked a default if it failed to raise $10 billion. I asked for a loan to support us, and Europe the EU agreed, but a mistake was made, we failed to put it on paper. On 3 December, Azarov warned that Ukraine might not be able to fulfill its natural gas contracts with Russia. And he blamed the deal on restoring gas supplies of the 18th of January 2009. For this, on the 5th of December, Prime Minister Mykola Azarov stated that money to finance the payment of pensions, wages, social payments, support of the operation of the housing and utility sector, and medical institutions do not appear due to unrest in the streets. And he added that authorities were doing everything possible to ensure the timely financing of them. Minister of Social Policy of Ukraine Natalia Korolevska stated on 2 January 2014 that these January 2014 payments would begin according to schedule. On the 11th of December, the second Azarov government postponed social payments due to the temporarily blocking of the government. The same day Reuters commented when talking about Euromaidan, the crisis has added to the financial hardship of a country on the brink of bankruptcy and added that at the time investors thought it more likely than not that Ukraine would default over the next five years since it then cost Ukraine over $1 million a year to insure $10 million in state debt. Fitch Ratings reported on 16 December that the political standoff had led to greater the risk that political uncertainty will raise demand for foreign currency, causing additional reserve losses and increasing the risk of disorderly currency movement. It also added Interest rates rose sharply as the national bank sought to tighten hryvnia liquidity. First Deputy Finance Minister Anatoly Miarkovsky stated on 17 December the Ukrainian government budget deficit in 2014 could amount to about 3% with a plus or minus 
Deviation of 0.5%. On 18 December, the day after an economical agreement with Russia was signed, Prime Minister Mykola Azarov stated, Nothing is threatening stability of the financial economic situation in Ukraine now. Not a single economic factor. However, BBC News reported that the deal will not fix Ukraine's deeper economic problems. In an article titled, Russian bailout masks Ukraine's economic mess. On 21 January 2014, the Kiev city-state administration claimed that protests in Kiev had so far caused the city more than US$2 million US dollars worth of damage. It intended to claim compensation for damage caused by all demonstrators, regardless of their political affiliation. On 5 February 2014, the hryvnia fell to a five-year low against the US dollar. On 21 February 2014, Standard & Poor's cut Ukraine's credit rating to CCC, adding that the country risked default without significantly favorable changes. Standard & Poor's analysts believed the compromise deal of the same day between President Yanukovych and the opposition made it less likely Ukraine would receive desperately needed Russian aid, thereby increasing the risk of default on its debts. Topic social impact in Kiev, life continued as normal outside the protest zone namely Maidan Nazalaznosti, Euromaidan was named Word of the Year for 2013 by modern Ukrainian language and slang dictionary Myslovo, and the most popular neologism in Russia by web analytics company Public.ru. Topic cultural impact According to a representative of the Kiev History Museum, its collection in the Ukrainian house on the night of 18-19 February, after it was recaptured by the police from the protesters. Eyewitnesses report seeing the police forces plundering and destroying the museum's property. Topic music of Maiden Leading Ukrainian performers sang a song Kozak System English, Brother for Brother to support protesters. Song was one of the unofficial anthems of Euromaidan. Ukrainian Polish band Taraka came up with a song dedicated to Euromaidan, Padai Rik Ukraini, Give a Hand to Ukraine. The song uses the first several words of the national anthem of Ukraine, Ukraine has not yet died, among other tunes. Some remakes of the Ukrainian folk song, A Flame the Pine Was on Fire, appeared Ukrainian, Gorilla Sosna Palala. The Ukrainian band Skriabin created a song dedicated to the revolutionary days of Maidan. Another native of Kiev dedicated a song to Taitushki. DJ Rudy Polenko created a track inspired by events on Maiden called The Battle at Maiden. Belarusian rock band Lapis Trubetskoy's song Daybreakers was one of the unofficial anthems of Maiden. Topic films of Maiden A compilation of short films about the 2013 revolution named Babylon 13 was created. Polish and Ukrainian activists created a short film, Happy Kiev, editing it with the Pharrell Williams hit Happy and some shoots of Babylon 13. On 5 February 2014, a group of activist cinematographers initiated a series of films about the people of Euromaidan. The American filmmaker John Beck Hoffman made the film Maiden Massacre, about the sniper shootings. It premiered at the Siena International Film Festival, receiving the Audience Award. In 2014, Belarusian Ukrainian filmmaker Sergei Loznitsa released the documentary Maiden. It was filmed by several cameramen instructed by Loznitsa during the revolution in 2013 and 2014 and depicts different aspects, from peaceful rallies to the bloody clashes between police and protesters. In 2015, Netflix released The Winter on Fire, Ukraine's fight for freedom about the Euromaidan protests. The documentary shows the protests from the start until the resignation of Viktor Yanukovych. The movie won the Grolsch People's Choice Documentary Award at the 2015 Toronto International Film Festival. <laughs> Art of Maiden Some photo correspondents created numerous unique pictures of everyday life at Maiden. Some artists expressed their solidarity with Maiden. Topic. Sport The 2013-14 UEFA Europa League round of 32 match of 20 February 2014 between FC Dynamo Kiev and Valencia CF was moved by UEFA from Kiev's Olympijski National Sports Complex to the GSP Stadium in Nicosia, Cyprus, due to the security situation in the Ukrainian capital. On 19 February, the Ukrainian athletes competing in the 2014 Winter Olympics asked for and were refused permission by the International Olympic Committee IOC to wear black armbands to honor those killed in the violent clashes in Kiev. IOC President Thomas Bach offered his condolences. 
to those who have lost loved ones in these tragic events. On 19 February 2014, alpine skier Bodana Matsotska refused to further participate in the 2014 Winter Olympics in protest against the violent clashes in Kiev. She and her father posted a message on Facebook stating, "...in solidarity with the fighters on the barricades of the Maiden, and as a protest against the criminal actions made towards the protesters, the irresponsibility of the President and his lackey government, we refuse further performance at the Olympic Games in Sochi 2014." On 4 March 2014, the 2013–14 Eurocup basketball round a 16 game between BC Budavelnik Kiev and JSF Nanterre was moved to Jalgiris Arena in Kaunas, Lithuania. On 5 March 2014, another round a 16 game between Kimik Yuzhny and Akon Ted Ankara was moved to Abdi Ipekci Arena in Istanbul. Trends and symbolism A common chant among protesters is, "...glory to Ukraine, glory to heroes." The chant has extended beyond Ukrainians and has been used by Crimean Tatars and Russians. The red and black battle flag of the Ukrainian Insurgent Army UPA, is another popular symbol among protesters, and the wartime insurgents have acted as a large inspiration for Euromaidan protesters. Serhii Yekolchik of the University of Victoria says the use of UPA imagery and slogans was more of a potent symbol of protest against the current government and Russia rather than adulation for the insurgents themselves, explaining, "...the reason for the sudden prominence of UPA symbolism in Kiev is that it is the strongest possible expression of protest against the pro-Russian orientation of the current government." The colors of the flag symbolize Ukrainian red blood spilled on Ukrainian black earth. Topic. Reactions In a poll published on 24 February 2014 by the state-owned Russian Public Opinion Research Center, only 15% of those Russians polled said yes to the question, should Russia react to the overthrow of the legally elected authorities in Ukraine? Topic. Legacy In mid-October 2014, President Petro Poroshenko stated that the 21st of November, Euromaidan started on the 21st of November 2013, will be celebrated as Day of Dignity and Freedom. Topic. See also. 2014 Crimean Crisis. 2014 Hrushchevskoho Street Riots. 2014 Ukrainian Regional State Administration Occupations Cold War II National Guard of Ukraine Orange Revolution Politics of Ukraine Rise Up, Ukraine Russian Military Intervention in Ukraine 2014 -present. Ukraine without Kuchma Ukraine-European Union Association Agreement Topic. Notes Topic References Topic External Links Euromaiden Collected News and Commentary at the Kiev Post Book about Maiden in English includes Maiden Chronology and many interesting insights Webcam on Maiden Nazalaznosti Espresso TV Live on YouTube in Ukrainian. Maiden Massacre on YouTube American documentary on the killing by snipers at the Maiden. Kachinovsky, I. 2015. The. Snipers Massacre. On the Maiden in Ukraine. Retrieved 27 November 2018. Estabrook, Mark. February 2014. Kiev. Picture. Flickr. Retrieved 27 November 2018, over 1,600 photographs of the Euromaidan revolution in Kiev. Bibliography Bachmann, Klaus, Liubashenko, Igor The Maiden Uprising, Separatism and Foreign Intervention, Ukraine's Complex Transition. 